In today's video, I will show you how to control time, just like this. All right, pretty cool. So without further ado, I provided you with the files you need in order to follow along with this tutorial. You can download them with the link in the description below. Do you find these tutorials helpful, but you still feel like you're missing the bigger picture? I created the Next Level Editing University to give you the exact blueprint you need in order to create epic videos from start to finish without feeling overwhelmed. The link is in the description below. All right, so now let's jump into Adobe After Effects and get started. All right, so here we are. I have these two files prepared for you. You can select them and import them in Adobe After Effects. The first thing that I'll do is drag on the first one and drag it into a new composition. So right here, we have myself walking in front of the camera and acting like I control time. I'm recording this at a station because there is a lot of movement there. So when you want to record this for yourself, make sure that you're recording on a tripod so you are on a locked shot and you're going to stand in front of the camera and do an act like you stop time, maybe slow it down, maybe move it backwards, do whatever you feel like doing. Okay, so here we are going to focus first on myself. What we need to do is key myself out before we're going to continue with this video. So I'm going to double click on this clip and make sure that before we do that actually, in the composition view, we are working in a full resolution. We double click on this and now we can select the roto brush tool and we can zoom in here. And we're going to make a rotoscope by clicking and dragging around myself just like this. Holding Alt, we'll be able to remove parts, for example, right here. So we get something like that and try to do this first roto as perfect as possible. So once you have your first selection, you can make this a little bit bigger and we can play through the clip to check if the rotoscope stays consistent. Preview this for the entire duration of the clip. And once you are done, you can click this button right here. And what I did is I already rotoscope myself out. So just to skip this part, so I don't have to redo this rotoscope, uh, you're just going to check. And on the frames that you don't like it, you're going to remove parts or add parts again. But usually you will get a very solid roto track. I'm just going to import that clip for now. So after having the rotoscope done, you should end up with something like this. Do you want to create epic videos just like me, but you don't really know where to start or you want a nice laid out guide, then this might be something for you. We are currently in the middle of the launch of the Next Level Editing University. The doors are finally open, so if you want to claim your spot, definitely check it out with the link in the description below. I'm going to show you exactly how to create amazing looking videos from A to Z, so you learn all the ins and outs, and I will teach you my 15 years of experience in this course. So if you want to level up your game and become an advanced next level editor, then this might definitely be something for you. Check it out, link is in the description and let's continue with the video. Now I'm going to play through the clip and look at where I have my actions. So right here, I'm going to press the asterisk key on my numpad. This is going to add a marker to my clip. Right here, I want to stop time. And then at this point, I want to reverse time. Everything is moving in reverse. I stop it again, slowing it down. And for the second shot, we have this shot right here where I just walked out of the shot and let the camera run. I just split it up in two video clips. And you will also notice that everything is played in slow motion because my camera captured this in slow motion. So we have options to slow it down or speed it up afterwards. It's around four minutes, so that's going to be ideal. So I stay here with the rotoscope layer that we just created. And all we have to do is take this second clip and bring it below it. And what we wanna do, and we will see immediately that everything looks good. I will also bring in my original footage back on top. And you will see that there is a slight difference here. And that's also probably because of the timing. So I'm going to right click on this clip and go to time, time stretch and set it to 50 and click okay. And now we should see that this matches up. So in my alpha version, I don't have the uh, colored LUT here. So what I will do is take my original clip and I'm going to mask it according to this clip here. 
So now we have the correct colors. I'm going to bring it in one more time. I'm also going to unsolo everything here. And this time we will see a slight difference. The small difference is going to be at the feet where we have the connection shadows and this really sells the realism effect. So what I will do is go over to my ellipse tool and just make a little ellipse around my feet here and press F on the keyboard and just feather it out quite a bunch until it looks more natural. And this is really a big difference in implementing this back into my scene as you can see right here. So once that we have that, we have the background layer that we just imported in our scene. So now we have this background layer, me standing here, and you can see that the background layer is also playing at half the speed. So what I will do is right click on my composition settings and go and change the duration to four minutes, just so I can see the entire duration of this clip. I'm going to make this very long, and then we wanna zoom back into the beginning, just so I can uh, assume everything afterwards. And then I will right click, go to time, enable time remapping. And the first thing that I wanna do is make sure that the speed plays regularly. So if right here we are at 350, we wanna divide that by two. So I'm just going to run it up to four seconds. I don't think it will be a big difference. So maybe somewhere a little bit before two minutes, I'm going to bring over this keyframe. And now we can trim that all the way up until here. Press N on the keyboard, right click here, trim comp to work area. And if we're going to preview this, we will have regular speed in the background. And then right here, we want to stop time. And then we want to reverse it somewhere here. So what I'll do now is select all of my clips and just offset them like 15 seconds and then take this background and bring it back a little bit. So we start right here. We have a lot of movement going on in the scene. And what I wanna do on this point here is I wanna make sure I have like an interesting point of someone walking by. So let's grab until we see something that we might like. Maybe right here. So we have a person in the background that's going to be slowed down and I'm going to create a keyframe by clicking here on the diamond and then move a few frames forward and click on create a new keyframe. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit, make sure this keyframe is selected and go to the last one here and hold shift, select that one as well. And then move this over to the second marker where we're doing our new act. And so right here, I'm reversing time until here. So what I'll do is go back to the beginning and create a keyframe here. And then we're going to copy this keyframe with control and C and paste it over here. So that way we're taking the information of this time and bringing it over here, which will mean that it's going to reverse the time until here. And so now we can see that, okay, everything is going in reverse up until here. We're going to slow it down again. So I'm going to click and create a keyframe, a few keyframes after that. So we have this ultra slow motion kind of feel. I'm going to zoom out, make sure this keyframe is selected. Go to the last one, hold shift, select this one as well. Go back and move this over to the next point. Till right here. And so right here, I want to speed everything up until here. And I'm also going to make a marker for this one. So I'm going to press the asterisk on my numpad. And so for this, I'm just going over here, let's say, and create a keyframe so we have enough time to speed up. And then select these two keyframes and move these over to this marker point. And so now, if we're going to press N on the keyboard or just bring this end part here to the end of our clip and the beginning part to the beginning of our clip, we can press the zero key on our numpad to make a preview. And let's preview this. Okay, we slow down time. We reverse it, we stop it, and we speed it up and regular speed. Okay, so now what is the problem? We can see that when we slow it down, it's very stuttery. Even though I recorded this at half the speed, the slowdown is way, way slower than half the speed. So to fix this, we can toggle the switches until we see these options here. And you see this little icon here. And then go over to your clip and click here and click again. And that's going to enable optical flow. So now if we're going to preview this, it will be a lot smoother. It's going to look in between those frames and generate a smooth version of that. 
that's pretty cool. Now, what else can we do? We can select all of our keyframes, make sure that they're in the right position, and then right click on them and click on Easy Ease. Then we can click here on the graph editor and we can make sure that everything like starts out slowly, ramps up in speed, and then we're also going to slow it down towards the end. And that way it's going to look a lot more organic or dynamic, let's say. And for this one, I'm actually going to click and control click on it. So I have a regular keyframe, so it immediately stops. But right here, I want it to ramp up in reverse. As you can see, it's slowly reversing. And then right here, I'm also going to make a control click. So we have a regular linear animation. So only the middle animations I want to smooth out. Okay, so that's really cool. The only problem I still have is there is not enough depth when um, this time lapse happens. I also want some people coming in front of me. And to do that, we're just going to find a person in the background, duplicate this layer, Control D, and then right click, time, and we can freeze this frame. And that's not going to, that's going to replace our time remapping. So we will have to scrub here through the time until we find a person that we like to work with. So let's say in the background, we're going to use this part. And then we go over to the pen tool and we're going to zoom in and just take a quick selection of somebody. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. Okay. Then bring this all the way on top Take this anchor point and then go over here to the pen behind tool and move this anchor point to the center of this person. Press S on the keyboard, scale it up quite a bit. Bigger than me. And then bring it over here. Press P on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch, go a few frames forward and make her pass. And then we're also going to enable motion blur. And like this, you will see a blur passing in front of me. So if we're going to just preview this range here, it looks like people are actually passing in front of me as well. So you can do this as many times as you want, but it just gives it a more dynamic feeling and it looks like the scene has more depth to it. Apart from that, I'm going back to my beginning, zoom out, select all of my layers and just move everything over until we just start our clip at the beginning. There we go. And now we can trim our clip to, let's say 15 seconds, right click, trim comp to work area. One more thing on the impact, I still want some stuff to happen. So I'm going to right click and create a new adjustment layer. On this adjustment layer, I'm going over to window, workspaces, and I'm just going to choose all panels here. Okay, we can close this panel and go over to the effects and presets. And I'm going to search for my quick shake preset, which you can download with the link in the description below uh, and apply that to this clip here. Then make sure nothing is selected and then right click on tile center, reset, anchor point, reset and position reset. And that's going to reset everything. Press U on the keyboard and you will already see some keyframes. I'm just going to select these keyframes and move them over on the impact. And I'm also going to disable here the use composition shutter speed and change the shutter angle to 180. That's going to give some blur on this screen shake. And if we're just going to preview this range here, we get a little bit of a shake on our scene. Like there is an impact of um, the time stop. We can also search for the VR chromatic aberration effect and apply that to the scene here and change it to stereoscopic and then click on the aberration red and blue. Make sure that you're on the point of stop. Go one frame back, change it to zero and zero. And move a few frames forward. And set it to zero and zero. Press U on the keyboard and press it again. And on this last keyframe, keyframe assistance, easy ease for both of these. And then go into the graph editor, select both of these. Select the last keyframe and bring this to the left so it comes to a slow stop. And so like this, we have some shake and we also have some aberration going on. 
which makes it look really cool. Another thing that we could do is apply the turbulence displace and bring that on this adjustment layer as well. Maybe increase the size a little bit and click on the amount stopwatch, go one frame back with page up on the keyboard, change the amount to zero. And again here to zero, press U, press it again, right click on the keyframe, keyframe assistance, easy ease, and then go into the graph editor and drag this to the left. And like this, you get a little bit of morphing. That's pretty cool. You can do this as crazy as you want. And if you think the chromatic aberration is too intense, just change the value here on the keyframe to minus five and plus five. And so now we get a very nice and subtle effect. Now you can do this on every one that you want, like maybe on this top as well. We can copy all these keyframes, control C and control V, and then move them over one frame. And maybe here as well, boom. Okay. And so now if we're going to preview it, it's going to look fantastic. One last thing that we wanna do is whenever we are in this time-lapse mode, you can see everyone is still very sharp and it doesn't really sell the idea of everything going fast. When things go fast on camera, usually see a lot of um, motion blur going on. So I'm going to click on this last clip here and I am going to be using a plugin. Uh, it's a plugin that is so commonly used by visual effects artists that it's really a must have to be honest, but I will show you a way how to do it without a plugin. So you have RSMB and if I apply this to my scene, you will see that in the moment of speed here, you get this motion blur on the people with and without, it's a big difference. You can play with the intensity here, maybe change it to one, change it to GPU accelerated, and maybe change the sensitivity to 100. And let's do a preview like this and you will immediately feel that the flow looks a lot better with this motion blur turned on. Now, if you don't have RSMB, what you can try is turn off this effect because you don't have it. Um, I'm going to search the CC Force Motion Blur and apply that to my video clip. Go to a moment of speed. And you will see in the background, if we turn it off and on, we also create some motion blur. So this is one way of doing it as well. Just make sure that the blur samples, you change them to something like 16 or 32. It's going to give you better results. It's a very slow way of rendering in the background. It's a lot slower than RSMB. And in my opinion, RSMB also looks a lot more realistic, but it's an option that you have. So why not use it? All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. Apart from that, I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, create epic videos.